solid state energy. Oh yeah, man, let's talk about that. Not only does this have no moving parts, but the core separator material of the cells has also been converted to nanotech-enabled silicon carbide. Hmm. Along with other components, it's compressed and sealed as a solid unit. Taking it apart would destroy it, like trying to open a microchip with a butter knife. So silicon carbide, you know, why change from the crystalline silicon to silicon carbide? The crystalline silicon was working just fine. Well, I have read almost every white paper that crosses my desk that's relative to my own research. Along with that, I'm constantly searching the internet just to see what colleges and private research and industry in general is currently researching or developing in this field. And I'm talking about specifically, uh, you know, battery technologies, whether it's lithium or flow or whatever. All these different technologies there and photovoltaics because there's some crossovers in that as, as well. It's, it's very interesting. I think very soon you're going to see photovoltaic and lithium battery manufacturers change over to silicon carbide. It's still semiconductive, but it can easily tolerate really high voltage transfers and dissipate heat while helping to increase density, energy density at a nanoscale level. Now this doesn't have anything to do with heat, so it doesn't have that problem. Uh, high voltage, well, you never know. I mean, if you get enough of these cells, you can definitely work with this in, in, in very high voltages. So transferring without damaging anything, man, you know, that is a very important aspect moving forward with any of these battery type technologies. So uh, just very quickly, uh, the um, I'll just tell you what you're looking at here is actually just three of our new power cell modules that are stacked on top of each other. There's six individual cells per module, making this 18 cells total. Uh, the reason it's so tall is because I kept the, the trimmable uh, extended threaded nylon rod that I provide for mounting purposes, designed from the very onset to mount directly to all of our experimental gen kits. I'm talking about from the very first one to, to the latest ones over the last uh, six or so years. and. Um, so that makes it very convenient for that, but, uh, but you can mount it in anything else in your own box or, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, you, you still have that. Or you can trim it off and have it just, you know, as, as tall as this. So just up to you. Uh, these modules were recently finished for order, so this is just temporary anyway. If all 18 of these cells were attached in just in one single rod, uh, you know, on, on the four corners, then uh, they would be they would only come up to here. So you'd have, you'd have a, a stack, a stack, and a stack down to the table. Well, that's only like eight inches tall. If you took out this gap and put a thin film of plastic as an insulator in between, all 18 of these would only be this thick. That's only three inches. Imagine, if, if, you, had, if you had three inches here and three inches here, that'd be 36 cells. That, that's a lot. I'm going to show you just real briefly here what the, uh, what the voltage is on these on these 18 cells all right this meter is going to display just the open circuit voltage of the cells themselves that's without ultra caps without the circuits just just the cells themselves i want you to see that the negative is direct connected to the cells and the positives have been disconnected so i can show you that so here it is uh, it's 32.46 volts again that's open circuit voltage and that's where we're going to be putting into the system. So it's really interesting how it handles it. And I want to show you that. All right, before I start this up, let me just quickly explain what you're going to see and how this works. Uh, it, it may look complex here, but uh, it's actually very simple. The circuit on the left here is a voltage controller for the capacitor module. That's all. It, it allows you to set the over and under voltages for the cap module so you don't damage it at all. I mean, it's really, really accurate. Uh, for this particular purpose, I've set the high voltage to 16 volts. Since the cap module's top is 16.2 volts, so 16 will work great, and the low voltage to 15.5. Now that's gonna be our working range for, for this system, from 15.5 to 16 volts. When the 30 volt output, or 32 actually, uh, charges this cap, up to 16 volts, this controller automatically disconnects the cap from the cells and turns on this uh, high watt time pulsing charge through the circuit here on the right uh, to charge the storage batteries. And when the cap module here 
drops to 15.5 volts, this automatically shuts off, this turns back on and the cells feed it back up to 16 volts and it repeats over and over. So it's completely autonomous. All right, we'll get this started. This meter here is gonna show you what the voltage is that's coming in from the pulse charger into the battery. And the analog meter here is gonna show you what the current is. I like the analog meter because the needle is a more visual, cool looking thing and gives you an accurate response as opposed to just seeing some numbers flash that maybe can't keep up with as well as the needle can. So that's what this setup is for, just this battery. This other meter is gonna show you what the caps are doing here on the cap module. Uh, on the high side and the low side and when this thing turns off and, and cycles over and over. All right, the, uh, the timing here is set to one second on and five seconds off. Uh, that gives it a chance to really pound some, some current in there. You'll see the pulse charge is 16 volts on this uh, meter here to 15 and a half on the low side, from the high side to the low side. And the current's going to show up on here at, um, it'll start at about 3 amps, and then it'll come down and average out around 2.5 amps. So it's pretty good current going into that. So we're talking roughly maybe, you know, 40 to 48 watts that's, that's going in this, each, each pulse. Uh, if you set the charging uh, to a higher frequency than uh, 1 and 5, 1 second on, 5 seconds off, like if you set it to 1 second on, 1 second off, or 2 seconds off, then the overall pulsing watts will, will be half of that. So probably uh, somewhere around 20 to 24 watts per pulse. Of course, there'll be higher frequency. So that's up to your discretion. Okay, we're gonna start the machine now. Uh, right now you can see that this is all connected, that it's coming up to 16 volts. Hasn't quite got there yet because I had reduced it down so you could see this, the autonomy of this thing. So I'm just gonna turn the switch on up here and a little LED comes on to let you know the system's active. And uh, of course this, this is always active because it's controlling the power into the uh, cap module to keep it at, at the 16 volt top. And uh, just uh, watch how the system automatically turns on when the, when the caps reach the 16 volts. It's really cool. This meter may be off a couple of digits, but it's, it's going to turn on and then watch the current delivery. I'll have to zoom in on those so you can see it a little bit better. But uh, you can see that, you know, this meter is going into this battery and those wires are just going up there. There's nothing, nothing hidden here. These are the output wires coming off of that and going into the uh, battery and the analog meter. So let me see, let me just hold it. It's so big, so tall with these like this stacked on top, it's kind of hard to get it all in one frame. But uh, you'll get the idea and I'll zoom in on this. It's just about to start, so you can watch it up here. It's, it's either going to be right on 16 or it may be uh, a couple of digits over 16.02 or 3 or something. Yeah, there's 16. Oh, right on. <laughs> now you can see this. Let me zoom in a bit there. Okay, let's let's look at the current here. Oops. There you well see it's still pegging on three amps. But it should come down. This will be its third or fourth. Yeah, you know, see it's still hitting three amps. And here's what the voltage to the battery is doing. It was at oh what was it? It was twelve point five. 12, I'm sorry, I should have shown that ahead of time. It's 12.5, but you can see what that's doing. And you can see what we're doing here. Now it's taken a lot of current because the battery was so dead at 12.5. And up here, you can see it's five seconds off, one second on, and it just repeats over and over. Let's see what the current is now. Oh, it's still three amps. All right, the battery was so dead, it's pulling out some heavy current, so it's just going to give it a short span to uh, to charge the battery at this point. But you can see what it's it's done just for a very short period of time. Okay, so it hit the 15.5, and uh, actually this said what 15.47, and it shut the system off. The this automatically shuts off. This automatically kicks on and has the cells refill the caps. 
and that's what it's in the process of doing now. Now it's, it's slow, this is a slow process to, to refill those caps. It doesn't have to go too far from 15 and a half to 6, but uh, we, we hit it pretty good <laughs> with 3 amps. Maybe I shouldn't have had the battery so dead, but let's see what it's, let's see what it's holding. That's not too bad. I mean, look, we started at 12.5 and it's 12.7 right now, so that's, uh, that's a good start. But, uh, but if you can imagine this doing this for, you know, while you sleep and, and more batteries than one and just doing this all night long and just taking its time when you're not using much more power. I mean, think about this. This kind of tech will never likely uh, or completely replace solar panels since they can give you a strong eight hours, if you're lucky, of high output. But what about the remaining 16 hours of a of each day they're dead this system will work 24 hours of each day with enough cells and a decent battery management system this is completely autonomous I mean that's what we want you can cycle battery banks uh, with a, a good BMS battery management system so that you're not charging and discharging them at the same time you need to avoid that it can because it can harm your batteries so just let that electronic uh, BMS uh, cycle those, those banks and and let this thing do its thing and let it go. I mean, even if it's just those 16 hours that would be wasted during a day, or if the, you know, you could have it running simultaneously 24 hours a day, it wouldn't matter, this, this system here, it's not gonna hurt anything, and just be an additive to the solar panels. But when the solar panels, after that eight hours of, of good sunlight's gone, then for 16 hours, you've got something that just, you know, takes it from there. And it depends on the size of the system to what you're gonna get and how many batteries that you can charge. So there you have it.